continuing with our uh, sessions we will now move on to sampling and uh, the central limit theorem now most of our uh, data sets that we work on in analytics are always sample data sets we almost never work on the population data set and the reason is that we never have the full data set i'll give you an example uh, going back to the class example suppose i want to do a analysis on uh, the students span country uh, who are attending grade 10 right now it is quite unlikely that i will be able to generate a data set uh, which contains every student uh, uh, who is enrolled in class 10 right but uh, what we can do is uh, we can always generate a sample of students who are uh, in uh, attending grade 10 and do some analysis on this for example if i want to figure out what is the average age or the average height or the average weight of uh, students enrolled in class 10 i can always take a sample of let's say 50 100 200 300 students it's quite li- unlikely that i will be able to access the medical records of uh, uh, you know hundreds of thousands of students who might be enrolled in that particular grade right so we are always working with samples and there are multiple methods of uh, sampling the most important method uh, is the srs or the simple random sample in a simple random sample every element in the population has an equal probability of in being included in that sample i e a sample with no bias for example if the population contains 100000 students then uh, every each and every individual or every uh, student in that 100000 uh, population as an equal chance of being selected in a sample for example if i am going to extract a sample of 100 students right from the sample of 100000 right then in this case every student in uh, the population will have an equal chance of being selected for that particular sample so that's a simple random sample a sample with no bias for example now if i select students who are only attending let's say urban schools rather than rural schools in this case a student who is attending a rural uh, school has less likely of a chance being uh, selected as compared to an urban student so that's not a simple random sample that's a biased sample okay so a simple random sample i'll reiterate is a sample in which every observation in the population has an equal chance of being selected as any other op- uh, as any other uh, observation the probability of being selected for a sample may be small for each observation but it is small equally small for every other observation so no observation should have a higher say, uh, probability of being selected that is known as a simple random sample now there are some other types of sampling as well which is uh, which are stratified sampling or cluster sampling for example if i want to do uh, sampling of a few cities uh, rather than the whole country that's you know a cluster sampling if i want to select st- uh, let's say students who are only enrolled in a particular uh, subject across the uh, the grade that is a stratified sampling right so there are very different kinds of sampling but we are going to uh, concentrate on simple random sample right now coming to the central limit theorem right the central limit theorem works on simple random samples and it is a very very elegant theorem everything that we are going to do from now on is going to be basis the central limit theorem so this is a very important theorem in uh, statistics as well as in analytics what does the central limit theorem uh, say a central limit theorem as per the textbook definition says a distribution with a mean mu and variance sigma square the sampling distribution of the mean approaches a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square by n as n the sample size increases right now this particular text i am not a very big fan of this text it is very difficult to understand what this actually means so i'm going to break down simple a central limit theorem into a very simple series of uh, steps right so we're going to go to the whiteboard and i'm going to assume that i have a sample over here let's say this is our sample or this is the population sorry so this is the population of let's say class 10 students right this population is too big to be analyzed for us right what that i can do is i can extract simple random samples from this so extract simple random sample so i'm going to call simple random sample as srs 
right? And I extract a series of SRSs or series of simple random sample, a series, let's say. By series, I mean I extract sample, let's say, S1, then I extract sample S2, then I extract sample S3, all the way till, let's say, Sn. So I extract n number of samples from the, uh, the population and each sample has a sample size. Let's say the sample size is 20 students, right? So I have now got, it. let me just make that again. So each sample has a size equal to 20 observations or 20 students in the sample. So I have a data set of uh, multiple samples now, right? And for each sample, I've got the sample mean or what is the uh, mean age or the mean weight or whatever is the measurement that I want to do the analysis for class 10 students on. Now what the SEDI central limit theorem tells me is that if I measure the, say, me, uh, the mean of each of the samples, for sample S1, I call this as mu1. For sample S2, I get mean mu2. For sample S3, I get mean mu3. All the way to for sample Sn, I get the mean mu n. Right? So if this is the sample mean variable x over here. Now what the central limit theorem essentially is telling me is that irrespective of the fact whether the population of the student for the, uh, the population of the student follows a normal distribution or not, the sampling distribution or the sample means of all the samples that I've extracted, so this variable, mu1, mu2, mu3, all the way till mu n, this variable will follow a perfect uh, normal distribution. Right? So the mean of these variables, mean of this variable, let me call that as the mu over here. Again, mean of this variable will approach the population mean, right? And the standard deviation, the standard deviation of these variable, this variable itself, which is the standard deviation, is the standard error of the mean. So this is the standard error. Now, why is this important? Two things, right? First, whether the population follows a normal distribution or not, right? The various samples that I extract, the mean of those samples, if I call that a variable, this, said, this variable, which is the sampling distribution, will always follow a normal distribution. So this is a normal distribution. And since we know the properties of a normal distribution very well, right? Using this normal distribution, we can then estimate the mean of the population. Why so? Because the central limit theorem again tells us that this variable will follow a normal distribution. The mean of this variable will start to approach the population mean. So if I calculate this variable mu1, mu2, mu3, all the way till mu n, and I calculate the average of this whole variable, which I call it as mu, right? This mu is now approaching the population mean. And the standard deviation of this, way, this uh, variable is the standard error for this population mean estimate, i.e. I can estimate what is the probability that the population mean lies between x1 and x2 or mu1 or mu2 by looking at the standard deviation of these samples. What this allows us to do, this allows us to make estimates, estimates of population using samples and this is very very important right so I can extract a series of samples and using those samples right I can now make some estimates regarding the population why so because the central limit theorem tells us that the number of samples that I extract for each sample if I calculate the mean or the the measurement that I want to this variable will follow the normal distribution right and since it follows the normal distribution, I can apply the uh, the formulas or I can say within one standard deviation or half a standard deviation or two standard deviation, what is the, the area under the curve. And the mean of these variables will start approaching the population mean. Okay? So moving on. The mean of the samples start approaching, starts approaching the population mean as the number of samples increase. Why is that? Well, as we increase the number of samples, almost uh, a greater proportion of the population gets involved or included in our, uh, in our analysis. And as that happens, 
obviously any inference that we measure on that sample becomes even more accurate when applied to the population so that's uh, you know basic logic however the standard deviation between sample means is the standard error of the mean this also decreases as the number of samples increase why because as the number of samples increase we get more and more precise information regarding the uh, population that we have so let's try another thought experiment over this case let's say i have a population again a population with a random distribution which may or may not be normal right and i want to i want to uh, estimate the mean of this population this population with a 95% confidence interval right so i don't want uh, with a sample we can never give a point estimate a point estimate is a is a that the the mean of population mean of population is say 20 that's a point estimate right we can never make a point estimate uh, using a sample because we almost certainly the mean of the population is not 20 even if the sample mean is 20 right but what we can say is the mean of the population the population lies between let's say 19.5 and 20.5 with a 95% certainty right and how can we get this uh, this value so we've been covering the normal distribution for a long time so i know that uh, for a particular uh, estimate if i can generate the 95 percent confidence interval that is plus minus almost two standard deviations i'll be able to do that right and how do i apply the central limit theorem that we've just covered to do or make this analysis right so applying central limit theorem over here right again so assuming that i have this population right what i can do is i can extract a series of sample let's say each sample is uh, 20 observations so i extract sample 1 sample 2 all the way let's say till sample 100 right so i have 100 samples and for each i have the sample mean over here the so sample mean let's say i call it x1 x2 all the way till x100 right now if I plot the distribution or if I look at the central limit theorem, it tells me that this variable sample mean x, this variable with 100 observations follows a normal distribution. Mean of the means, right? Mean of this variable x, I'll call it x bar, will approach the population mean which is mu, right? So x bar will approach mu, right? It, it, it's not necessarily that x bar is mu right it will approach mu and the standard deviation of this variable x is the standard error of my estimate so i get a standard deviation over here so this uh, this variable will give me a standard deviation and that is the uh, standard error of the mean or the standard error or the error in my estimate so i can apply x bar plus minus one sigma right which will give me a 68.3 percent confidence interval around the estimate that i have so if i apply x bar plus minus 1.96 sigma or 1.96 standard error that will give me the 95 percent uh, confidence interval now please remember this sigma is not the standard deviation of each of these samples right each sample has its own deviation which is the sample standard deviation so sample standard deviation is separate each sample has its own de standard deviation which is sample standard deviation standard error is the deviation of these sample means from the overall mean of all the samples put together right so if i look at this i have extracted 100 samples right each of uh, 120 observations each now this is a problem for me right if i have to do this analysis do i really have to go and extract 100 samples random samples uh, from the population or can i say now pay attention can i say instead of having 100 samples of uh, 20 observations each I have one sample of 2000 observations. I extract a sample with 2000 observations, right? In the theory, in the background theory, I can always, you know, 
divide into 100 samples of 20 each or I can extract it into you know 1000 samples of 2 each or you know uh, it could be 50 samples of uh, you know 40 observations each it doesn't matter even if I have one sample right I can still apply the central limit theorem by hypothetically in the background assuming it is made up of a number of samples uh, put together therefore the mean of the sample of 2000 which is x bar right and the standard deviation of this sample right how do I extract the standard error the standard error is the standard deviation of the sample means right there's a formula to extract the standard error from sample standard deviation which says the standard error of the mean is the sample standard deviation divided by under root of n right this will start approaching the standard error so in this case right if I have a sample of 2000 right and I extract a sample mean sorry sample standard deviation right and divided by the under root of 2000 this will give me the standard error so instead of extracting multiple samples I can extract one big sample and hypothetically in the background assume that they are there are where that big sample is made up of uh, multiple small samples and then apply the central limit theorem it is logically one and the same thing whether I extract a number of samples or whether I extract only one sample the central limit theorem will still hold true right and again I'll reiterate what is the central limit theorem central limit theorem states irrespective what is the distribution of the population it may or may not be normally distributed if I extract a series of sample from this population and for each of the samples I plot the sample mean right then the sample means will follow a normal distribution where the mean of the sample means will begin to approach the population mean and the standard deviation of the sample mean is the standard error in my population mean estimate i.e. if I look at x bar as the sample uh, as the estimated mean of the population and I include the standard error or the standard deviation around this this will give me the confidence interval of what is the point how strong is my interval estimate regarding the population when I use that sample for example for these 2000 samples if the mean comes out to be let's say 20 and the standard deviation comes out to be 0.5 then I know that a 95% confidence interval which is plus minus 1.96 we'll just say it's about 2 therefore 20 plus minus 2 will give me a 95% confidence interval that means that the uh, sorry plus minus 1 if it's 0.5 if uh, the standard de uh, error is 0.5 therefore plus minus 2 standard deviation is 1 therefore the confidence interval is 19 to 21 at a 95% confidence interval i.e. I am 95% certain that the mean of the population lies between 19 and 21 now there's a 5% chance that the mean of the population is outside this particular range what is the probability it's greater than 21 so if I know at uh, 2 standard deviations this is 19 this is 21 right what is the probability that the population mean is actually greater than 21 right now I know that a normal distribution is uh, symmetrical around the mean right so this shaded area is 95 therefore the area outside the shaded region has to be symmetrical on both sides and I know that's 5% so that this gives me 2.5% on each side right so I can also make claims like there's a two and a half percent chance that the mean of the population is greater than 21 and a two and a half percent chance that the mean of the population is less than 19 and a 95 percent chance that the mean of the population lies between 19 and 21 and that is the elegance of the central limit theorem now if there are any doubts regarding central limit theorem I suggest going through this chapter once more and uh, going through uh, the text of the central limit theorem also while this text is highly highly uh, difficult to understand uh, please refer to the points in the lecture where I talk about the central limit theorem in simpler terms because after this now we're going to start using the confidence intervals and we're going to move on to uh, hypothesis testing which is highly highly dependent on the central limit theorem